Hey guys, before you watch this video, I'm Davin with Borshear. If you guys would like to be a part of the company and own a little piece of it, check out our Start Engine campaign. It's like a Kickstarter, but for companies and investors. So like I said, if you want to be a part of that, go to startengine.com forward slash Borshear. Thanks. Yep. Okay. Hey, I'm Mark from Borshear. So we've got this XLC trailer. This is our flagship model and we're going to loan it to Tyler. And he's not getting it for nothing. He's gonna test it because he's a survival expert. And one of the things we wanna know is how will this trailer hold up in a survival situation? Now, we're pretty sure it's a good trailer for recreation. We sell a lot of these for people to take them camping and things like that. But what about if you needed it in an emergency, as an emergency preparation resource, maybe to evacuate, you get out of town, Maybe you're already out hunting or something and you, and you have to stay a few days longer than you expected. Whatever the various scenarios. My name is Tyler White and Vorshear has loaned me this XOC trailer for the purposes of demoing. Essentially what we're trying to figure out is will this trailer work for an ultimate bug out device. There's a ton of videos with people taking these trailers overlanding and taking them up in the mountains and over rocky terrain and craziness. Being a survivalist my curiosity is how well does this fit the niche of bug out. The things that would determine whether or not we're going to bug out are basically broken into one of two things. The most probable man-made scenario and the most probable natural scenario. The most probable man-made scenario might be civil unrest, it might be war, it might be some sort of a leak or explosion of some sort. And the most probable natural scenario in my area, because it is area dependent, might be an earthquake or a forest fire or something else, right? So. If we can plan for the most probable scenarios, then all of that other minor stuff becomes easy, becomes something that's easy to deal with. In survival, you need fire, water, shelter, food, communications and medical, and the ability to replenish that indefinitely. What that means is that you can go a certain duration of time before you need to replenish or replace your fire, water, shelter, food, communications, and medical. We can extend that time dependent upon the preparations or the things that we do with a trailer like this. Fire, there's a couple different ways that you can heat this. Now, the reality is it's a microclimate. This little box is a small area that body heat will be able to suffice during the majority of the year as long as you have a really large volume of sleeping bag. Something like maybe a feathered friends or something really, really puffy, you don't need fire. However, it's got this really cool propane heater in it that will turn on and off depending upon the thermostat settings that you choose. That lets me know I want to extend my duration of time. Maybe I want to say that I can live in this for a month, two months, six months. And the way that I do that is I just increase the capacity to carry propane. Now I have two of your barbecue propane tanks on this right now. One can run the heater inside of the camper and one can run the propane generator. I have a little ALP generator that is dedicated propane. The main reason I'm doing this is because gas prices are getting kind of out of hand and it's nice to have an alternative solution to cook with and heat with that you can use also for power and electricity. Water, water is fairly self-explanatory. There's about a 30 gallon, 30, 35 gallon tank attached to this. And I know in my own personal RV, there's only a 25 gallon tank. I can go with my family and my kids for about a week straight with showers and normal water usage on 25 gallons. So one or two people should be able to do a month easy with something like this. The average survival calculation for water is one gallon of water per person per day for cooking, washing, and drinking. 
With that in mind, you would say I can go 30 to 35 days or one month just in the water tank alone. In order to make that indefinite, what you're going to need to do is have an option where you can draw water. You should be able to take a trailer like this to a stream. There are devices that you can slurp water straight into the tank and that gives you indefinite water. Food. This has a really cool freezer. It's a fairly large freezer for the trailer and it freezes down to below zero. The reason that that's beneficial is, let's say I'm driving up here, an earthquake happens, my house gets crushed. The trailer's fine because it's on a suspension and it bounces when the earthquake happens. So I just go take my vehicle, connect to it, and we head to grandma's house, right? So what that means is on my way, maybe everything I own has just burned in a fire or been crushed in a house. I can gather roadkill. It needs to be fresh. I can shoot and process animals. And in the back of this truck, powered by either propane, fuel or sunlight, I have a, a freezer. That freezer can freeze if you debone it about half, maybe a full uh, deer worth of meat in that freezer. And that's super beneficial and valuable because then you can take it to your final location. You can smoke it for long-term storage and you might have a full season's worth of meat or at least a month for a family worth of meat out of one animal. Food procurement. There's a lot of options for food procurement. I choose a little rifle like this. I've also got a 308. Uh, this is a Ruger 1022 in a Desert Tech Trek 22 bullpup stock. This is more than just a stock, it's also got a trigger system and components on the inside of it. The valuable thing about this is that when it comes to game taking, it's super, super quiet. So, something small like this and something lightweight like this, maybe even a suppressed pistol, is an excellent food taking device. Now, once you, once you shot the animal, you process the animal, you have the meat. If it's too hot and it's midsummer, you don't have a way to cool it, you can stick it in the freezer in the back of the, the trailer here, and that gives you a way to have long-term food procurement. Quick example on how quiet this is. Now most game can be taken with a 22 at close ranges, but it's nice to have a thousand meter gun or at least a seven, 800 meter gun uh, in the form of something like a 308. The positive to a 308 is it's long range and hard hitting capacity. The problem with this gun specifically is how loud it is. also going to rip the tree completely apart, which is kind of awesome. Power. Let's talk about the options when it comes to power. You can always grab power from the sun. There's also a way to connect directly into a solar panel system. The problem with the solar panel system is it doesn't work unless you have direct sunlight and that can be very limited in the winter or it can be limited if you're in a position like we are right now where it's almost 10 o'clock in the morning and I still haven't got direct sunlight for the solar panels. Because we're talking about food and the ability to freeze food, we need to talk about power. Power also gives you the ability to run the heater. It also gives you the lights and the ability to recharge your communication devices. Now this is a BioNO, B-I-O-E-N-O, 100 watt solar panel system. I love them. You can put two or three of them together and create two or 300 watts of solar system and just run it, run it through your charge controller. The one, thing, the one thing to remember is that your charge controller is made for your battery type, meaning if you're gonna run lead acid batteries, you need a charge controller for lead acid. Now, the Vorsheer trailer has a Norco charge controller in it that will change that. So you can hook solar panel straight to this Norco charge controller in the Vorsheer trailer. You just push a button to change what type of battery it is and it will change how it charges, charges for you. So if you're doing these solar panels by themselves, you need a charge controller to control that. If you're running these solar panels into the Vorsheer trailer, you don't. It's already got one and it'll take care of that on its own. Um, the good thing about these, in they've been sitting here in the dust, is they just fold right up And then you can just throw this inside of the toolbox right there in the front. 
my theory on it is overkill, right? Figure out what you need, add another 100 watts or 200 watts to that system, and go from there. I've also got redundant uh, generators at the moment. I've got a uh, gas-powered Honda generator right here. Gas is a very efficient source, right? So you can throw some Rotopax cans on the outside of your trailer. You can put uh, jerry cans on the back side of this trailer. It's got a jerry can holder. You can grab scepter cans. That's what the military likes to use and have a huge duration of power that you can pull electricity from. This is good because it extends that final portion of re replenish indefinitely, right? True survival, you can kind of put a time limit on it. When I, I'm going to run out of gas at this point and at that point I'm going to be 100% dependent on solar panel or I'm gonna to have to go get more gas or whatever. So you have these points where you say, you know what, I can live in this for 30 days easy. I can live in this for six months easy. The way that you increase those numbers is increase the fuel. It's really easy to take the propane tank on here and put like a 100 gallon propane tank. It'd be substantially taller, but it's gonna launch it out huge amounts of time that you can not only run a propane generator, but you can run heat into this thing. So you have electricity and heat and that gives you bigger durations of time. Gas, I've got a gas power generator right here. It's a little Honda, it's a 2000 watt Honda and it'll run the AC unit, it'll run the heater, it'll run the cooler, run everything. So our power options are solar, gas in the form of a little generator, propane in the form of a little generator, which we already have to have for the heater. So I say the win is as much propane as you can carry in conjunction with the solar panels should get you for, through an entire season. And the reality is, why would we need a bug out for a longer duration of time than that? If you were to use this in a legitimate survival situation, cooking is more than just cooking food. Cooking is also boiling water. Now, there are ways that you can get, I'm gonna call them industrial size purification devices that suck water into the tank. This has a storage tank. It doesn't have the ability to purify the water. You would have to add that on to the system. Um, you can boil water if you were to get a big pot. This is a very fast burning, fast boiling system right here, this uh, cook partner stove. Um, it would be more efficient to find a way to gather large volumes of water with a pre-filter and some sort of an electrical pump and then either add chlorine by using two to one, meaning two drops to one liter to chlorinate um, or boiling water. This propane canister right here is the one that, you know, it's the average size that comes with uh, your normal barbecuers, but it, it could handle a much larger size. And the reality is that you could add more propane on the outside if you want. And essentially you're just extending your duration of time. You're extending that ability to replenish that I talked about earlier. So if we go back to fire, water, shelter, food, communications, uh, medical, the ability to extend indefinitely, propane is not an indefinite thing, but it should be fairly easy to put 30 days worth of propane on this vehicle in the form of two or three of these uh, barbecue sized propane containers. It also really depends how much electricity you're creating and how much heating you're using. It's cold up here, it's, it's below freezing right now and I have been running about 10 to 12 hours a day propane off the generator and running the propane at night and I think we've got a solid week on two cans. Um, I'm estimating based on the weight of the, the propane can if you were using this as a bug out vehicle, two, two propane cans and you got at least a week. And where in the continental United States can you not drive to in that duration of time? You're gonna run out of gas for your vehicle substantially faster than you are propane to heat and create electricity. Another idea is for those of us or those of you that have a bug out location. If you're able to have a, uh, a large house size propane tank put at your bug out location, you can pull this vehicle right up to it 
and now you've got electricity, you've got heat, and you've got cooking until you run out of that, which is the duration of an entire season. So that gives you a, a way to take a vehicle like this, bug out to your bug out location and stay there for a big duration of time. And you can throw camo netting over the top of it if we're worried about civil unrest and all those types of other things. In this series, we've talked about the viability of a Vorshear trailer to be used as a bug out vehicle, a mechanism to get you and your family out of an affected area because of civil unrest, earthquakes, hurricanes, whatever it is. Given its ability to overland like an overland vehicle, you can go places where there aren't roads, you can jump curbs, you can go in locations you wouldn't otherwise be able to go. Basically, if your vehicle can go there, the trailer can go there. Part of shelter in the summertime is sunlight. Sunlight can dehydrate you, it's hot, it's kind of brutal. And having this awning on the side is really nice. It's also really nice if it's snowing or if it's raining. It gives you a place to step outside of the shell of the, the box in order to get dressed and do the things that you need. And it also gives you a space that you can take a shower on the side. The tent, the awning, the box are multiple forms of shelter that are included in the trailer. Shelter also is heat. One nice thing about this trailer is that I can just throw a bunch of sleeping bags in there and if we need to pull over and crash, we just get in, some, in, in the sleeping bag pile and go to sleep. So when it comes to shelter, it's a clear win. I would rather sleep in something like this than I have many survival shelters over the years. So the Vorshire trailer is an absolute solution when it comes to shelter.